Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you tuning in once again. So we're in video number three this time around. Uh, for a little quick recap of where we uh, left off, if this is the first time you're watching this video series. Uh, the first video we went through a little bit of uh, going through the parts, seeing what we could sub-assembly, uh, getting it ready for some primer. Uh, second video, uh, we cleaned up a few things. Uh, we primered it and did all that. Um, and in this video, we are going to throw some paint down and get it into some color. So we are painting it MCW Candy Apple Red. Uh, we are doing this in enamel and going that route. So sit back and uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, back to our build here. Time for some paint. So I went in and re-wet sanded this. I used my 2000 wet and dry and I did do the wet and dry part with water. Took it back in and washed it. I wash these every time I do them. And like I said, the big thing too, keep your hands clean. Wash your hands. I wash my hands first, then I'll wash the model. I don't, because I'm telling you what, I've had so many times where you're thinking, hey, this is going really good. And for some reason, you itch your face for some reason. The oils from your skin will cause, especially with enamel paints. Lacquers, it doesn't so much affect it. I mean, it will. But I found more with a light enamel, it will just make that just fish eye and just walk away like no big deal. So you got to keep it clean. Keep you clean. Keep everything clean. So we are using the candy apple red. Next is the 6630E candy apple red enamel MCW. Then we are going to be using the hardener. So I just got some more from having a model today. So works out good. So I use this jar here. I find it works better because these lids will sometimes, they will seize up on you and you can, can't get the thing off. I mean, I'm talking like welded on. So I just take these, dump them in here, and life is good. There, so it gives me pretty much a full jar of that. So we're going to do a mix with this. Uh, we're using our Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Um, like I said, this works great for all this stuff. So I'll get this shook up and... I'm going to mix enough, hopefully, to do the whole car. Being this is red, it's going to take a few coats. So I'm going to do start off with some light coats, and then I'll give it one good heavy coat in the end. So I don't have to give the center of the hood too much attention because this is going to be black here. But I do want to give it a nice smooth coat so when I do put the black on, um, it'll have that nice uh, smooth look because whatever it obviously is on the bottom is how it's going to look on the top. Got a little... Pipets, pipets, however you want to say them. Um, so like I say, these cups are pretty nice. I use these for everything. They're just medicine cups. Um, I got these from Hobby Nut Model. Uh, they work really nice. So they have them in milliliters. So that's usually what I go from. I go off that. Uh, so for this painting, I'm going to use... Um, I usually normally go um, basically 5 milliliters. And then I'll do another five milliliters of thinner. That's my usual mix. But on this, we're going to go a little bit more because I know that one total milliliter paint is not going to cover this being it's red because um, we're going to have to give it multiple coats. So I'm going to go a little bit more. Um, I may go 0.75 of paint and then same with thinner. And then we're going to add some hardener to it. I don't usually like to dump it out of the bottle uh, just because you, you end up with that run down the side. Um, so I, it takes longer to do this, but obviously you guys can do it however you want. But this is just the way I do it. Just because it, it's just faster. Well, okay, I'm sorry. It's not faster, but I feel it's not as messy. And it's horrible that I try not to get it on the top, but as you see the caps laying there, um, it's wicking its way to the edge, so either way that doesn't matter because that's how it ends up in the end. So like I said, we're going to go to 0.7, or we're going to go to 7.5 milliliters and kind of run with that. Okay, so that's 0.75 there. And we're going to use our leveling thinner. And like I say, this may not be enough either, so I don't, I'm not sure. We can actually just dump this in. So we get too much on it, we'll just take a little bit back out. 
So I try to keep the mix on these pretty accurate um, just because if I don't remix them, you know, in a little bit, um, I know my mixes are usually perfect right on the money. So I don't usually, I, I try to keep them pretty, pretty accurate. And you'd be surprised a little bit of extra of this, a little bit of extra of that. It does make a difference. It makes a big difference on it, on how it'll spray and every, everything included. So all I usually do is take this here and I'll mix it with this. That's usually how I do it. All the guys that just watch the channel, you've seen me do this quite a few times. I need to, I need to yet buy me one of those little badgers. It's on my, it's on my to get list. So I don't know why I do this. I do this all the time. So I lay that in there thinking I'm trying to avoid some situation, but I end up knocking it over. I do it almost every time. Stupid? Yes, sir, it is. Because of the weight of this. But you'd think it wouldn't tip it over, but it does. I just don't want to take it out and set it down. So that's why I do it. Risky, risky. This is a nice color. And on that primer gray, um, it'll give it a little darker sheen to it. Not a lot, but just a little bit more. So it looks pretty good. Now we're going to add some MCW hardener. Now this hardener, once I put this in the pipette, I throw this away because I don't want this contaminating anything else I touch. Because uh, this will, if you put this into paint, uh, just let it set, it will pretty much cure um, and turn it into jelly after a while. So on this pipette here, it's incremented. Um, it goes up to 3.0 milliliters. So I'm going to actually run this up to about 1.6, 1.7. go with that I don't like to put too much in it because the problem I found is that it almost feels like it, it sprays a little dry but I'd like to put enough in there to I'd like to put enough in there to um, make sure it's doing its job so this amount here uh, now we got that in there this amount here should give me about a cup and a half in my airbrush and that should be about perfect for painting this model so I did take it in the house, I washed it, I brought it back out here, um, and I did, I cleaned it with my microfiber towels, and I washed it down real good, wiped it down. I find those work just as good as anything to take the dirt, dirt, here I say dirt again, it's not dirt, it's dust, to take the dust out, um, and it works really good. So, so once I get this mixed, I usually run along the side of the bottle here, or my thing, and as long as it turns transparent, I'm good, but if it if I go on here and it's like just super thick and it just slowly runs down, that tells me it's it's too thick. I need to thin it more. So for this project, I am using the Iwata. Uh, this airbrush is let me grab it here. We're going to be using this guy here. So this is the Iwata uh, HP C Plus. Uh, this has a 0 0.3 needle in it, and this is usually my to go to for spraying body work. And we're going to be running about uh, about 19 PSI on the compressor. Just if you keep in track. All right. So we're going to take the body over. So I mentioned this before on doing painting on how I paint stuff. Um, I will do is mix the paint last. So once I get everything prepped, ready to go, I get the body work prepped first. And then I, I mix the paint last because the thinner will actually start evaporating slowly out of your paint once you mix it. I mean, it's not like a regular thing of thinner just sitting there, um, but it will slowly start evaporating. So once I get to my last final run, I'll add just a little more thinner to it. Just not a lot, just a little bit. And that'll give me a kind of a nicer wet coat. Now, if you're spraying metallics, you don't want to add too much more thinner because you'll take your paint that's already starting to bond everything and if you add a little more thinner to it to thin it down and you give another little kind of wet coat where that metallic is setting on the edges it'll actually let the metallic sag and run and it'll kind of it'll walk away from the sharp corners so you kind of got to be careful with that a little bit if you if you are adding extra to you know give it that little more of a smoother look i found that out by accident so i was like whoops that did not go as planned Okay, so we'll get this going here, and uh, I'll take you over the paint booth, and let's get her sprayed.
Okay guys, so before I get spraying, um, I, I decided to put this on a skew with a uh, tack. Um, I was going to put on here, but I got thinking, you know what, I want to take this off and set it down so it's not on the hinges and it'll be harder to do this way. So I figure I'm just going to go this route because the underneath the hood's going to be black anyways. So that works good. And I like using that thumbtack, that poster tack stuff that works really good. And for the body, I'm using a huge, huge tongue depressor, popsicle stick or whatever. Um, I don't know why. Sometimes I find some of the, the my Tamiya stands, I got to clean them because I feel sometimes when I tip it to spray it, I feel like I'm getting old paint particles or dirt into my body, into the paint. So um, I've been doing this lately. It works good. But if you guys are using something like this, make sure you can flip this thing around and whatever. And it's not going to fall off because... Once you get painting um, and something comes loose, you're not going to be able to grab onto it and, and uh, you know, try to reposition it. So make sure whatever you use, it's going to be worthwhile and it's going to hold for you good. So and I always use gloves. I, I like having gloves on and all that stuff. So we'll take you over and we'll get started on it. So I get started, guys. I always use spoons to test with. Beautiful color.
I'm going to go grab the car body and let's see how that looks. That's been sitting out for about, uh, about a good three hours. So let me grab that and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so this is our body. That turned out pretty good. Like I said, it's been sitting in the dehydrator now for, like I say, about three hours. So it turned out pretty nice. And here's our hood. Hood turned out really nice. So like I say, I'm going to let that cure out. I'm going to paint that black in the center and go from there. And then underneath, um, this is going to get black as well. So it turned out pretty good. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. And like I say, I like to paint the body and get this out of the way. I like to do this early on because I use enamels. And these take, sometimes will take a little longer to cure out. Even though I do use the dehydrator uh, to speed things up a little bit, still um, this way here, all this is out of the way and I don't have to worry about it. So, um, and all that good stuff. So, so by the weekend, it should be pretty well ready to rumble and uh, throw, start throwing some decals on it and kind of go from there. So I'm not 100% if I'm going to clear coat it yet. I'll see how the decals lay out. Um, it does look nicer, obviously, if you do decals and then clear it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. I've done both ways. Um, so, yeah. So, the paint's looking pretty nice. So, it's one of those, hmm, do we want to gloss over top of that? We'll see. We'll see how it looks. So, alright guys. We're going to wrap this video up. And I appreciate you watching. So, once again, thanks again for watching. And we'll see you next time around. You guys have a good one.